be sure of that coming in. It's your recording. Perfect. Oh, okay, All right. Perfect. Welcome to the May 27th Common Working Group meeting for chaos. So on the agenda today, the first thing we have here, I'll share my screen, that'll be probably easier. Um, make sure I'm sharing the right thing. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, you don't need to see all of my other secret documents. Yeah, except for the double secret VMware <laughs> corporate <laughs> strategy. Secret. Yeah, where actually this week has been delivering like pay and promotion stuff. Yeah, so you have to be like super careful about what oh, you share. Yeah. It's uh yeah, it's more it's sensitive about week. such things. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so first thing on the agenda is to review action items from previous meetings. So we had some action items last meeting. So um so Yash, uh, you and Sean were going to work together on the read me with the new template and um, send something out to the mailing list. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I didn't do anything. Did you, Yash? Yeah, I made a PR in the common working group. Awesome. So you can review it whenever you get the time. And I think each working group is familiar with it that we are going to have a standard structure. I additionally put it on the mailing list. So we are good to go, I guess. Cool. Um, okay, so we'll take a look at that pull request when we get to the pull requests section of the agenda. Um, so Kevin, you had an action item to review and merge, review and merge. Is approved. I'm not even sure I understand this action item. Do you, Kevin? <laughs> Wait, you're on mute. I think that's actually what Yash was just talking about. Uh, okay. He he sent the uh, he sent out an email to the entire uh, uh, community about the README. I think that's what that was about. Okay. Yes. Here, here's what I think. Here's what I think happened. I think we had um, dueling note taking because I think that these are kind of duplicative of the action items above. This was um, probably I can clear was that in the wrong I mean, week. I had, uh, I had oh. recommended that Yash send out an email to the entire community. And I think that's what that mm -hmm. was. Yeah. Um, okay. Not exactly. I think no. the focus area readmes they also have been proposed to be standardized. So it was an action item to review that PR, and that has been merged. I guess Kevin reviewed it. Oh, excellent. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I see. It was. It was about the focus areas as opposed to the. Maybe. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, so long ago. <laughs> it's amazing what can happen in two weeks. Um, okay, and then the template's been added to the governance repository. So I assume this one's done as well. Yep. Uh, the template has been discussed in each working group. So I think we are good to go on that also. Okay, cool. Um, Sean, did you get a chance to look at the time waiting for submitter action action no. item? Okay. Time wait, no, but I have been working on language distribution this morning, which is like way down the list. Like, because <laughs> that was my oldest to do in common. Okay, so that that I'll just move that one up. Um, what was the what was the other one? The action item? Language distribution. I don't even know if it's on our current action item list, but it's on the metrics list with my name on it. Okay. And it's the oldest task I have in this working group. <laughs> it's so old, we've completely forgotten about it. Yeah. Um, let's see. We have an action item for for Daniel to do a review of this metric. And he's not on the call. So I'm just gonna again move that one up. Sorry, which one was that? Was that collaboration platforms? Yeah. And then Matt, your action item for the bots, bot activity. You were gonna work Didn't on this. It. Didn't do it? No. All right, just moving it, moving it to next week. Just 
All right. I, I hated hearing my name, and then you had to <laughs> scroll down and see what I didn't do. I felt like a student. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So we got through the action items. Let's look at the uh, open issues and PRs. Uh, okay, so this is this is the one we were talking about updating the README to follow the new template. Um, yeah, okay, so this is uh, has a lot of a lot of changes. I can summarize them. So oh, I'm sorry, what did you say? I can summarize them. Yeah, do it. Uh, so the major thing. Major changes is that uh, we are not displaying the meeting time now in the readme files. Instead, we'll be re redirecting the reader to the meeting minutes or the participate section on the website. So we don't have an additional place to maintain the meeting time in case it gets changed in the future. Another major change is that uh, we'll be removing the core contributor section and the maintainer section as agreed. And instead we have a chairs. So Don and Matt, they'll be the chairs, I guess. And I needed some info on the background of the working group. Couldn't really find anything to put there. Like, you know, for example, uh, when was the working group formed? Who were the initial members? like how the working group differs in the way it currently is from the way it originally was or any other info you may think we can add here in the background do you feel like we need more details than this should we have more background so we can choose to entirely remove the subsection yeah, uh, I don't know if we, I don't know how much interest there is in the history of this or how much of that is kept around in other projects. I think this is fine the way it is, the background. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we need very much. Yeah, maybe. Um, so that's that's the section right here. I would say I would say, Yash, maybe we just uh, maybe we just delete this these bullet points in the heading. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, this all looks this all looks good. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and make that change, and then um, one of us will will go ahead and merge it uh, later. Yeah, sure. And I'm if making... one of us doesn't if one of us doesn't merge it in the next few days, uh, ping us on Slack and remind us, because I am my GitHub notifications and my email get overwhelming, and I I miss things. Do we do we want to add uh, email addresses to the uh, chair information? Uh, we'll be linking the chairs to their GitHub profiles. So any other info? I guess, yeah, in, can be on the yeah. In addition to that, do we want to add an email address, or do we want to keep it all in? Uh, I'm okay with just GitHub profile. Yeah, I mean, my email address, I think it's public. I'm going to get a profile. Thank you. Okay, so that's our only pull request. Um, issues. We have, we don't have Justin or Georg, do we? don't have them with us today, but they're here in spirit. 
because what we talked about last time was that we really wanted to kind of talk with them before we start work on the drive-through contributors. So um, are we calling them flyby or we're calling them drive-through? That's the language we agreed on. I remember that now. Never mind. Uh, that, actually, I think that conversation is still happening. I, I is, prefer uh, episodic. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So episodic there's, there's is what's, <laughs> episodic about is what we should call this. In the literature, in the academic literature, episodic. Although I've, I've had a conversation with Anne, something, Beast, Beast, her last name, I can't remember what it is, but she looks at this a lot and she uses drive by. So, I mean, I know drive by is colloquially common as well, but. Yeah, uh, I think drive, actually, drive by is the most common way to. Actually, I believe she yeah. uses it. I, oh. I think she does now. So, and maybe she does when she writes, but when I talk to her, she just called them drive bys. Oh, yeah, and and Barcom. Barcom, that's it. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What? And Barcom. Oh, and Barcom. Yeah. Okay. Bar Barcom. B A R C O M B. I thought you said and Barcom, and I thought that that was no. some new term for episodic, and I was like, wow, I've never <laughs> even heard that word. You know, she'd probably appreciate having it named after her. <laughs> um, okay. Her on that note, uh, I don't know that we really need to talk about the the issues. I think that once we merge the pull request, we can we can close this one. Um, I feel like we've we've talked about the issues recently, so maybe we'll. Does anybody want to talk about any of these issues specifically? Um, I know I don't have any need to talk about them. Uh, the only thing is like time waiting for submitter action. There is a Google Doc that's coming along pretty well. So I don't know if, like how you want to address that like here as an well, issue or later. Um, so we have, uh, we have Daniel here. Was that one you were working on? I was supposed that I'm doing now, by the way, um, to review the collaboration platforms uh, document. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Well, let's let's go ahead and go back to the agenda because I have, I think I have some of these. Oh, yeah. So I have some of these on the. Oh, time waiting for submitter action. That's the one that Sean was That's the one. Down. Yep. And Sean worked on the older one at the bottom. <laughs> instead, because it was old. So metric spreadsheet. Let's just have a quick look at that and see if there's anything that we need to do here. Does anybody have anything specific they want to talk about on the metric spreadsheet? No, I mean, I was looking at it kind of in parallel here. I think it's pretty well up to speed with like our issues, you know, like as we have them tagged in issues and yeah. in the minutes as well. Okay. What's the, uh, what's the distinction between time to first response, time waiting for submitter action and time waiting for reviewer action? I can go with this. Um, so the, the time to close is, or time to merge, if we talk about a pull request, is total time that it takes since some, someone sent a PR and then this is review it and then this is merged into the main branch. The time waiting for a submitter action, the time waiting for a reviewer action is the time between, for instance, I'm, I'm the submitter, you are the reviewer, Kevin, so, so uh, I send something when, when this is, on, on the platform, let's say publicly, this is the time till someone, the reviewer, uh, is, is the community is waiting to, to get that review in somehow. So this is the time to re for, for a reviewer action. If you say, oh, do you mind if you update this or improve this? Once you have, let's say the minus, minus one or, or, or some kind of reaction or review uh, uh, change, then that's the time waiting for a submitter action, which is like a ping pong match. Um, so that's, so that's the difference. Let's say that the, yeah. the whole cycle, so, mm -hmm. so several time waiting for a submitter and reviewer action is the whole time to merge. I do a PR in the Grimoire lab. I wait 
10 minutes for you to do your work. And then you wait three weeks for me as the submitter to make the changes that you recommended. And then I wait another 10 minutes for you to review it and tell me if it's mergeable or if there are more changes, basically, right? It's this exchange between submitter and reviewer and which sometimes it's, I mean, it's most often the submitter who it takes longer. Yeah, what, what we've seen sometimes is if there is a decay in the time waiting for a reviewer action, this may uh -huh. mean that there is there is not the uh, interest. It, it, there is there's uh, too much uh, workload perhaps for reviewers, so maybe the community needs some more. That mm -hmm. be the use case. The other way around, if the time waiting for a submitter action is too high or it's increasing, maybe submitters need certain uh, training, for instance, or maybe uh, some more tools to do a proper uh, uh, submission. Longer wait times are a signal of something that can be or should be addressed in a community. Right, that's what you're saying. So, so for submitter action and reviewer action, we're actually calling out two specific people that would be responding. Mm -hmm. uh, is that is that the same case with time to close and time to first response? Is there a is there a certain person that you're talking about? So, first response and close closes that whole window of. of I submit it. Daniel says, I need these changes. I make the changes. We go back and forth a little bit. And at some point it's closed. So that's the whole window of activity. These, these time waiting for submitter action is the size of each of the windows within that whole frame. Okay. And first response is? For like, usually it's a bot that says, got it. And so that's why we have bot activity probably and the first response can simply be an acknowledgement of the pull request, I think. I, well, I, if, if you ignore bots, you may have humans, human beings. Right. Mm -hmm. the same. Yeah, if I look for the first, that. my time for first response is the first human response. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah, that would be what probably most people prefer. So for reviewer action, are we actually talking about, are we, so are we talking about a action within a pull request? Or are you talking about the reviewer, like actually reviewing the code? Um, and remember the in uh, in GitHub, for example, there's there's a difference between uh, a pull request and a review, right? A, a review exists within a pull request, and it's a separate it's this separate thing. Yeah, they, they are super, they are different things. But uh, once you have the pull request, then you expect to to have a review at some point. So once you get the review in place, that total time between the pull request time and the and that review is the time to review. Maybe the reviewer, the, the real review, only took like I don't know ten minutes, but in real time it took like three weeks because maybe the reviewer didn't have the time. So the time we are measuring here is the three weeks. So, so reviewer action wouldn't be a pull request comment, or, well, or, or, a, or adding a tag to a to a pull request or something like that. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be a reviewer action. That's to be defined, I have to say, because this is this is mainly coming from Gerrit, which is perhaps more specific with those actions. Okay, thank, thank you for, for talking through that. The reason, the reason I asked, by the way, was because I, I wasn't sure if we needed to uh, edit the names of any of those previous metrics that, that deal with a time to, uh, to kind of match that naming convention. So, and based on what you said, I don't think we do. So. Anything else on the spreadsheet? 
I was multitasking during this. I've, I cleaned up a few things. For example, row 32, the name was off. We had called it burstiness of something. And I just got it aligned with the actual name of the released metric. And then co column D for our released metrics, we provide a link to the markdown. And a few of those are still pointing to the Google Doc. And so those are all cool. updated now too. Thank you. Okay, so, um, oops. So we have a couple of things we could talk about. So, um, so I know Matt, you said you hadn't done any more work on the bots. So let's not talk about that one. Um, so it looks like language distribution is ready for the group review. Also, um, what about collaboration platforms, Daniel? Is that one ready for us to review? Um, I, I was indeed reviewing the doc, so it is. I do have a question. So if, if we are focusing here, then I, I, I have a question. If not, then we can, I can leave the question for in, as a comment. Um, so the question is, uh, which one do we want to focus on in this meeting first? Do we want to focus on, do we want to look at collaboration platforms or language distribution? Sort of leaning towards collaboration platforms um, since there was an action item from last week in there. Um, and you said, Daniel, you had a question about this? Hmm. Yeah, um, well, indeed, Two questions I, I left. Uh, in general, I agree. So the, the question, the, the action item I had uh, last uh, two weeks ago was, hey, please review this and then we can see if, if this is okay to go. So there are two comments. First one, at the, at the top of the, of the document, we say collaboration, uh, collaboration platform message count. We don't have to, uh, so this is not only focused on messages. So, what I suggested in another, uh, as a comment, is uh, messages or traces left by, by someone. Because it's not only about messages, as maybe you, you sent an email, but traces that you can leave as uh, I don't know, uh, a commit that's activity in one collaboration platform. So if, you use, if, if for all of you it works, the keyword trace or event, then I think that's that's a good thing to have. So collaboration platform events or collaboration platform trace activity. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, collaboration platform. So what we have so far here is message count. I would go for collaboration platform uh, trace activity or, or activity? So what do we use? Let me just ask the question differently. Um, across the other working groups, do we typically refer to those as events? Do we refer to them as activities? What, what are we using in the other working groups? Because we should try to be consistent. So um, we, we identify in, in evolution messages explicitly, however, you can have like you can from the GitHub API and the GitLab API. You can get the discrete message, you can, and you can also get an event stream that includes the event of a message without the content of the message. So it would be the timestamp and that it was a message on this pull request or this issue. Mm -hmm. So there's an so like the platforms are providing an event stream, and you can just look at the event stream, or you can like messages are a one example of a discrete thing where you can get more data than just the event. Like for labels, you can get the color of the label. Like I had a student project on label color distribution across GitHub projects this semester, which didn't tell me anything useful, but was cool. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like maybe activity yeah. is getting some consensus uh, in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so let's 
probably activity. And there are many categories of activity. And I don't know if we want to enumerate them as like uh, filters or what's the other thing, parameters? That's the second question. So we have in the filter things as number of people on, or number of messages, but I don't know if these are real filters that we can apply here. Um, I see uh, as filter, can, for instance, things as you say, the maybe the, the data source this is coming from, maybe mm -hmm. the organization, maybe even people, individuals, but not the number of, that's all. Oh yeah, those really aren't filters. Um, those are they're, they're like you can count the number of people who have performed an event in a repository of some kind and you can count the number of messages and count the number of comments but those aren't filters i think you're saying yeah this this people can be used so the number of people or the number of messages what you can do is to aggregate information right so, yeah they are aggregators not, not filters but that's all so those are the two questions I have. For the rest of it, I'm okay with the changes and the suggestions. Uh, where where does where does aggregators where do aggregators fit usually? I forget. I think we used to have them close to filters. But... Is it is it in implementation? I'll, I'll go and look at the template real quick to see where aggregators fits. Uh, I do think, I think we need to address the, this is the a question uh, to reflect the, the comments that, that Daniel had made though. I don't, I don't think the question matches what we were talking about or the, the name change to collaboration platform activity. Okay, so let's let's talk about the question. And then I think what I'm going to suggest is that because there are a whole bunch of suggestions throughout the document, let's let's bottom out on the question in this meeting. And then Daniel, why don't you go back and accept all of the suggestions and just kind of clean it up a little bit and then we can take another look at it in the in the next meeting. But I feel yeah. like we should we should at least bottom out on the question before you accept the suggestions. So Kevin, you said there were some concerns with the question. Uh, yes. Also, when the when we accept those uh, all the the comments or remove those comments, we should probably uh, capture who those people are for the contribution uh, space at the the bottom of the the page. Okay. So down down yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. And just to, just to make sure everyone. Is included. Well, we can always we can always pull up in history of the doc too. Yeah. So, um. I just added a comment. Like one thing to consider when you talk about activity is like on these platforms when you're looking at the event stream, there are 36 different types of actions on issues in GitHub, and I don't know, many of them may not be totally relevant, but okay. So, so Kevin, sorry, what was your question about the question? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think it uh, addresses the the comments that, that Daniel had made. Uh, so now that we're now that we are talking about collaboration platform activity, the question focuses directly on the number of messages, right? Counting counting messages, uh, and and I don't believe that's what we're talking about now, right? We're talking about a little bit more than that. So instead of messages, this is what is the activity? I believe this that open and then we can apply all of the filters that Sean was mentioning. I mean, so the so question is like, do we want to list all those filters or do we want to refer people to platform APIs? I mean, there's 36 event types that are, could be categorized as activity on GitHub. And that kind of is for pull requests and issues. I'm sure GitLab has some set about the same size. Hmm. 
I don't know if we want to like enumerate all of them as they exist today in this document, because then we would have to keep up with them as they change on those platforms, but maybe just refer to like a, an approximate count and that there are a lot, there's a lot, or we could include them as a, we could include them somewhere as well. I don't well, I mean, care. the filters are never a complete list of filters, right? There, yeah. there's some of the possible filters. So I think we should yeah. include the filters that we think are probably the most likely. But yep. let's let's focus on the question for just a minute. Uh, do we, <laughs> sorry, Sean's getting distracted. Um, do we think that, I mean, is this, is this what we're looking at? Do we, or is it activity counts? Let's just bottom out on the question so that Daniel can go and clean the document up for the next meeting. I think counts are what I'm, I'm the level of activity. I think I'm hearing that this metric is the count. Like this. But what it, is it the number of activities in uh, number of activities in total and of specific types, perhaps? So for example, somebody one project may be interested in just a sum of all of the activity, whatever it is. And another project may be interested only in comments and pull requests related things. Wouldn't that be a filter? That's what's on. Yeah, so I'm trying to abstractly state that in the question so that it's clear that, but I mean, yeah, I guess just what if, what is the kind of, it? yeah, I think that works. If we want to just defer to the filters, I think that works. Kevin, does this address your concerns about the question? Oh, sorry, I was I was adding the uh, aggregators. Oh, cool. Again. Uh, what is the count of activities across digital collaboration plan? Yeah, yeah, that addresses my concern. Okay, okay, so let's let's go with this and Daniel. So you can just resolve all the things make any additional changes and then come back and we can talk about it in the in the next meeting mm -hmm. so that we have some time left to talk about language distribution which is ready for a group review yeah it's i think just critical commenting is i mean it was fairly well developed matt had made some comments back in september um that i addressed and Georg added uh, Grimoire Lab visualization. And um, the looks like somebody accepted the changes that I made earlier, which is cool. Um, but so under objectives, um, Matt had suggested, and I, I think it's useful to provide an example of how this metric may be useful to different work, different working groups. And, and so I elaborated from this brain only some ideas under the in value and evolution and then below that if is uh I, I'm, I make a note of ospo interest just in general of their um portfolio like what languages are you know not just one repo but if i take the ten thousand repos that i'm looking at as an ospo manager which languages are dominant or which languages are very little used but super critical that that kind of awareness across a inventory. Okay, Sean, so what, what do you see as the, the next steps? How, how can I, we help advance? This? Well, I, I think, I think if people look at it and say, yeah, that's it or I could do a pull request and we could discuss it as a pull request. I can I confess I wasn't sure what the right process was. Well, it looks like there are people putting some suggestions. Oh yeah, in. So yeah, it's like that's true. Got, um, we can do some work here on the on the Google Doc. Usually, oh, we get all of the I'm, language I'm, cleaned up in the Google Doc before I'm, we PR them. Yep, I'm seeing. I'm seeing. I'm. I was a little confused because I've seen timestamps that are later today than it is in existence, but I realize I'm. We're sharing your screen, and that's why I'm seeing that. Oh. 
Did I you also try to scroll on my screen? Because I, I do did that. I, several, I tried to edit as well on your screen. <laughs> I do that all the time. Um, okay, so it looks like there are there are some. Yeah, I can address the comments, kind of comments that people make or change. My only thought on time, Matt, is um, you know, this is data that can be gathered as often as you like and is, can be maintained over time. And one of the examples I use um, is, is uh, it's, in, it's helpful sometimes to know the projects, maybe like what I see happen sometimes is the project will be heavy Python and then they'll do a lot of front end work and it'll become more heavy JavaScript. And those changes over time can be useful. I don't know if pro hospitals look at stuff like that at all. Um, Daniel or Don might be able to indicate if a temporal view of or temporal filter on program language distribution is useful or not. I think it depends. Depends on OSPO and depends on how much engineering actually happens in that open source program office. Um, I mean, we could take it time out or leave it in. I don't have a strong feeling about it. I just know why it's in my why I put it in, but it's. Uh, I mean, I, I do think I do think that some people some people are going to care about that um, quite a bit actually, and it well, I guess it impacts more than more than just like contributions, but also like tooling and things like that. Hmm. I mean, it lets you so like I, the, the commit data, the pull request data lets you look at your process, and this is really a, a point in time inventory, and you can see changes in your inventory of language distribution across a, a collection of repositories. There's a word, I'm, yeah. whatever you're responsible for. But if you see if you see the language distribution changing drastically um, over time, that might impact some of the tools that you use internally exactly. within your OSPO. Exactly. Obviously different ones work better with different languages. Yeah, like in RISC, for example, there are dependency scanners that are they're all language specific. So if you identify a prominent language in your collection of repositories that you don't have a scanner for, uh, you might want to get one. So do we want to just take a few minutes and, and leave, leave comments? And then maybe maybe circle back. Uh, we don't have that much time left. I think we have seven minutes. Seven minutes. Yeah, I'm just taking a look at it right now. So Sean, what is the Augur Community Reports repository? Do you have that link? Um, I do. Where should I put that? You Under mentioned the... it, tools providing oh, yeah. metric. Oh, yeah. Just um, link there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Should I just create, a, should I make that into a URL? That'd be fine. Do it in Markdown form. Oh, right. OK. Yep. Yep. Got it. Let's see if I can remember markdown form or if I reverse it. I often reverse which bracket is which, but I think I got it right. For a, same thing for Grimoire Lab. Would, would... Yeah. I know that URL. Daniel, is it? Just the Grimoire Lab repo, or are there other repos involved in this? Uh, you mean 
for language distribution. I know you have a number of different tools and different repositories. Do I just refer people to Grimoire Lab? No, this is, yeah, this is, um, so the analysis is done by another repo in reality, but Grimoire Lab should work. Okay. All right. Is, would it be, all right. If, and if you have a documentation, like if you have a documentation site that you prefer to refer people to as well, that, I mean, how you edit it, however you want people to find it. Hmm. Well, yeah, Grimoire Lab is the entry point. Should have been. I'm just accepting changes because that makes sense. I assume I assume we, we've taken those optional terms out of the template, Matt and Kevin. I'm so what sorry. That? Yeah, what was that, John? The the Matt, you crossed out optional in a number of cases. And I yeah. know at one point those are part of the template. We've taken them out of the template, is what I'm hearing. Um no, we just don't need the parentheses optional. Oh, okay. Oh, right, because that's the template designation. And once it's yes. delivered, you yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's no one, yes. It's reading pretty well, to be honest, top to bottom. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. I don't, I mean, like I said, I think we probably need to accept these changes, but it's probably, does anybody feel like we need to do more work on this before Sean does the PR? I don't think so. Okay. Really the only work that remains is making the PR contain the visualizations and the tables. Otherwise I could just copy and paste. The PR, the issue, like there's gonna be an issue for comments needs to be created. Does it, what, does the issue sorry, come what do we first call these? These the, are, sorry, these are, what, what do we call the, the metrics that we review in between the releases? We have a name for that. that under community review. So no, under like, under community mm -hmm. review. Mm -hmm. There's like this giant piece of markdown that we put at the top of it to say that it's a in between formal metric release. So release candidate. Release candidate. Yeah. It's so they get to the website so that people can see them and use them, but we designate with a giant piece of markdown at the top that it's you know go through it's it's reviewed for 30 days beforehand, but then it's not formally released as a uh, a named release until whenever we do our next named release. And I don't know what we call it. We had a name for it at one time. Are you talking about the disclaimer that goes to the top? Yeah. OK, so I've added that as an action item for you. OK, I've got it PR for. I just dropped the disclaimer into the chat, by the way. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Kevin, as long as I grab it before the call ends, I'll have it. I am going to add it. <laughs> oh, Apparently thank you. I Apparently can't copy and paste. Oh, it, it actually might be a good idea to just add it to the template now. I added it. Yeah, we uh, could. That's Thanks. a really good yeah. idea because it's, it should be in all of the metrics. So we might as well add it to the template. Yeah, and it, yeah, it doesn't get removed till after the comment period. So, you know, it's a, is it a is a third level heading in the hashtags when we? I think that's. What uh, yeah, I believe we treat that as a third or a fourth a hashtag. So, there is a little bit of inconsistency in how that's done. Uh, I've seen it italicized a couple times, uh, but I believe a third level heading is appropriate. I don't okay. have a preference, um, so. 
Well, I'll let you sort that out offline. I just saw that we were out of time, but somebody added focus area reevaluation. Sorry, I didn't notice that this was added to the agenda. Uh, this was this was me, and this just came up in the DEI working group. Just to just spend a little bit of time taking a look to make sure the focus areas are still appropriate. And if the answer is yes, then great. The answer is yes, but just the that we don't like kind of institutionalize these things forever because they were named a long time ago. That's all. Okay. So I'll we, add that to the agenda for the next meeting since we cool. are out of time. Real quick, is there a protocol for listing contributors? Other than like I've tried to list the people that I see on the call going back and forth and making comments, but I again. would I would look at the history of the doc. Oh, and okay. See, um, so in addition to the people here that have been making comments on the call, also just make sure you didn't miss anybody who contributed early in the doc. Okay. Got it. Got it. Also, I think some of the onus is on them to to add themselves. So if we don't. Uh, if we do miss them, I think we, we need to try to encourage people to not be shy about adding their names to these documents. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. This is, this is frankly the first metric I've worked on that we've had this heading. So, um, for that, and at least it's going into release at some point soon. So, okay. All right. Thank I think you. We're, I think we're in good shape. So, Thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. All right, see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.